She is the gift that keeps on giving to the Walt Disney Company. After having caused Snow White to probably be delayed due to her remarks and insane commentary that Prince Charming is a creeper, well, she's at it again. This time, Rachel Zegler is taking on another Disney franchise, one she's not involved in, but allegedly one she'd like to be involved with now. It's all part of a spin campaign to fix things up, patch up the, the holes, and send her on her way. Rachel Zegler today, folks. You won't believe what she said about Star Wars. And better yet, we'll put on full display the absurdity of the spin campaign and show you exactly how fixing a PR crisis works in Hollywood. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel. Happy to have everybody here. We endeavor to explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve. It's what we're going to do today. And we're doing so by going back once again to thatparkplace.com, where indeed the articles are flowing fast and freely, and they are also of pure excellence in covering entertainment. John F. Trent, the author on this one, Rachel Zegler appears to take shot at Lucasfilm after a Star Wars What If show rumored. And folks, also... Be watching for thatparkplace.com to drop an exclusive. I'll be the author over there tomorrow morning if you're watching this video at the day of its release. We've got big news when it comes to Dave Filoni. You don't want to miss it. Rachel Zegler appeared to take a shot at Lucasfilm following a rumor that Lucasfilm is developing a what-if style show for Star Wars. As reported by the Hollywood handle, Scooper Daniel RPK claims that Lucasfilm is developing a what-if style show for Star Wars in the same vein as the MCU, because, well, that's all they can do at Lucasfilm now is copy. And so you can see the artwork there. A what-if version of Star Wars is reportedly at the works at Disney. Um, chances that we get a what-if Luke Skywalker was actually cool? Eh, probably not. Although that's the what-if that would make them billions of dollars. Zegler reacted to the Hollywood Handles report and seemingly took a shot at Lucasfilm, simply posting, what if somehow Palpatine returned? Ooh, sick burn, the rise of Palpatine. How about that? Joining the chorus of those who usually are calling for Zegler to be fired. What is this lady thinking? Oh, wait, she isn't. She isn't. She posts just like she's a normal person and she's always privileged. Clearly. And what if was indeed done by Lucasfilm in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker with o uh, Oscar Isaac's Poe Dameron uttering the now mocked line, somehow Palpatine returned. Yes, somehow, also, also known as Ryan Johnson ruined every single line of narrative we had. <laughs> get, out the, get out the toy collection. What do we got in there? Oh, there's a Palpatine toy. Throw that out there at the audience. Palpatine had also previously returned in the Star Wars Expanded Universe during the Dark Empire storyline, published in a series for Dark Horse Comics in the early 1990s. While it appeared Zegler was taking a shot at Lucasfilm, she then seemingly got serious and pitched herself as the voice of Poe Demeron's mother. Now, here's going to be my take on this, folks. I think that what Rachel Zegler did is she probably unintentionally stepped in it. She tried to make a quip, and instead... She kind of made light of the sequel trilogy, and that's a big no-no at Disney, especially given the situation they're in right now, where they're trying to launch a Ray movie that seems just about unlaunchable. And so, they needed to fix it. So what did they have her do? There's, listen, unless Rachel Zegler is this massive Star Wars fan, there is absolutely no way on God's green earth that she knows what the RZ-1 is. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, folks? Come on, think about this for a minute. You're telling me that Rachel Zegler, a Hollywood actress who is so busy maligning and destroying her own franchises and the franchises of others, you're telling me that she sits down and watches Star Wars Dave Filoni cartoons to the point that she knows the initials for a ship, for an obscure ship for the mother of a main character. Come on, folks. Think about it. Here's Rachel Zegler's tweet. As a fan of the comics, I would like to throw my hat in the ring to voice Shara Bay, mother of Poe Dameron, because her ship was an RZ-1 for Green Squadron. Oh yeah, I'm sure that Rachel Zegler knows what the RZ-1 is. I'm sure. You know what this is? This is somebody in PR said, quick, what do we got? What can we do? How do we fix this? We got to make her into a Star Wars fan. They appeared in the ongoing Star Wars series from Marvel Comics that was launched back in 2020. It's worse, folks. It's not a Dave Filoni cartoon. It's a comic. I'm sure she's reading comics. I'm sure Rachel Zegler is sitting there 
on a pile of Star Wars comics, memorizing and recognizing every ship and picking out favorites based on her initials. As Ziegler noted, Bay was an A-wing pilot of Green Squadron who fought for the Rebel Alliance. She would also receive a Force-sensitive tree from Luke Skywalker, which she cared for at her home on Yavin following the war. I'm sure that Rachel Ziegler also keeps a tiny, tiny little tree. Maybe it's a bonsai, and she tries to replicate it exactly so that she could be one with the Force with Luke Skywalker from an obscure comic series that nobody read. It's on Yavin that she raised Poe Dameron with her husband, Kess Dameron, and served as part of the planet's civil defense uh, force. If Lucasfilm does indeed have a what-if style show in development, it would likely be modeled after their short story anthologies from a different point of view, which typically fell, uh, tell traditional stories from the point of view of more obscure characters. What do you make of Zegler's comments? They're not Zegler's comments. They're PR teams. That's what that is. Come on. You think you think Zegler's sitting there reading obscure Star Wars comics in her in her spare time? No! She's out there battling the patriarchy. She's out there making sure there are more monstrosity CGI dwarves replacing the, the dirty bandits that she brought in, making sure people know that Prince Charming is a creeper. Who's that fellow over there? He's not a creeper. He's Valiant Renegade. Um, that's what that's what this is all about. This was a PR fix for a woman who just steps in it every single time. Hollywood has got to get rid of this woman. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not advocating that you do that, Hollywood. I'm just saying, you know, when you watch... <laughs> When you watch a ravenous weasel gnawing at your forearm, you got to get rid of it. This woman, all she knows to do is gnaw at you. She just, you know, she's she's hungry. She's hungry for the destruction of franchises at the very same time that the Ray movie is trying to get into uh, get into production somehow, some way. Here's Rachel Zegler coming out saying, "What if Palpatine returned?" Oh, mock it, mock it, good Rachel Zegler, folks. That's the video for today. Rachel Zegler, she is a she is a treasure. She is a national treasure protect this woman at all costs uh if you need a if you need some sort of weapon to take on these franchises and destroy them she is your main mode of operation she is your uh modus operandi when it comes to this sort of thing you don't even have to hire her just point her in the direction of a franchise and let her loose she's like a she's like a weed eater in a uh, in a uh, drought she'll kick up dead grass like you won't believe go rachel zegler not really but go rachel zegler Again, not really. All right, folks, if you like this kind of uh, video, click the like button, share, subscribe. When you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts on Rachel Zegler. Wonder what they'll come up with next to fix it. She loves it. She loves those obscure ships only mentioned in comic books. She reads them all the time. All right, folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and you know it. Keep having fun. Listen up, my brothers and sisters. You've been listening to Phil's and Zoe's with an agenda to destroy your brain cells for far too long. It's time to change your way of doing things. Hold up. TPP is the place to be. Covering the news so honestly. It's a team that's cool and tried and true. Ahead of the culture curve, they're trying to keep you. Jonas and Pro, they run the show. And they drag in the bearded culture casino. You got Valiant and Lord and Force of Life. Wonderful people, yeah, they all right. They got weird bringing in people like Flora, but made no mistake with Lorena Creole. Amelia and John stuttering guitarist. Martin and Tani and someone called CMS. Fat Steven makes a bunch of all the graphics. Did I mention a partnership with Bending in the comics? That guy is a guy and Doc Matt does the web stuff. There's probably some people I miss. I hope they're not uh, telling you the news. That should be fun. With accurate info that's not been spun. You can figure it out as you will see. The TPP is the place to be. Yeah, oh, Wilton. Yeah, that was actually pretty good. Or white. But I, I think you might have forgotten Vash. Well, he lost all his friends. But it was implied. Uh. <laughs>